This one and two, when we come to discussing this harmony in nature and harmony in existence, then we will exactly put what is going to be the meaning there. But if we are too eager, I have already written that realization and understanding. So one is the realization, the two is the understanding. But then, what is the meaning of realization and understanding? It will become clear when we talk about harmony in nature and harmony in existence. So, understanding of the harmony in existence is called realization of the coexistence, in existence. And then, understanding of the harmony in nature, which means understanding the basic nature of all the units which are in these four orders, that is called understanding. So I need to have the realization of the coexistence in existence. I have to have the understanding of the nature of all these four orders in nature. So that is what would, would it mean. So I am waiting for that to be completed first in that one and two. See, what is happening till now is this desire, thought and expectation in you is decided by preconditioning and sensation. Finally, it has to be decided by this realization and understanding. Realization of coexistence in existence. Understanding of basic nature of every unit in nature. If that takes place, then you know what to do as a human being, with human being and with rest of nature. That will become your desire. So now your desire will be governed by your realization and understanding. So that is what we want to connect later. I am going slow, you know, because it is important for you to be able to understand and see what is being talked about. Otherwise, if, you, if I give a lot of words there, okay, and you don't understand it, then it will be of no use for me. Then you will have to carry it something, you know. Something very good, you know. Just keep carrying and pass it on from generation to generation. <coughs> so I think three days. I keep this in the board for three days because I keep thinking that you might come back after three days. So, so three days are over now. <laughs> Because that is your state of being. You keep taking off.
Till now we talked about harmony in individual, in human being. Then about harmony in the self, harmony with the body. <coughs> we have discussed till now. Now we want to move on to discussion on harmony in human being. We are talking about harmony in family, and the first important point to note is, is that the major issue of importance in family is this human-human relationship. It's the relationship between human being and human being. So what we are going to study. Then we are talking about harmony in family. Is this human-human relationship? This human-human relationship. If you look into it, there are main of you know, four observations which can be made. I will write down those four basic observation about relationship between human being and human being. You look into it and verify whether these statements are true. For you, not true for you. So, if you look at this, there are four statements. One is the relationship is the relationship is there. Right? If you begin with the family. It's not that you have to make relationship, right? The relationship is there. What is important is to understand the relationship and ensure the fulfilment in relationship. So, first observation is that the relationship is there right? between one human being and other human being. And if you look at this relationship, one important factor <coughs> that you can obtain, you know, observe in this is this that this relationship is between oneself, right? So it is between one self and the other self. Who is feeling the relationship? The self or the body? Self. self. So this is one important observation. So between one self, right, and the other self. This is first observation. Second observation is that if you look at this relationship. There are feelings in relationship. <coughs> there are feelings in relationship. 
feeling like fast feeling like respect so these feelings are in i or other i right? or one you know in one self or another self for example i have the feeling of respect for you so this feeling of respect is in my self for you right? the another self what do you think feeling is in self or in body yeah. Yeah. for another self This is second observation. The third observation is that these feelings can be identified definitely if you go to count them these are the nine feelings so i can write down this feelings that the nine feelings which are there in the relationship so this is the third statement we have made that these are the nine feelings which i can identify in the relationship you can ask yourself whether these feelings are naturally acceptable to you in the relationship the feeling of trust or mistrust trust feeling of respect or disrespect respect feeling of affection or feeling of jealousy so these are the feelings you know which are there in relationship 
in one self or another self. These feelings can be identified, they are definite. And if I ensure the fulfillment, so their fulfillment and evaluation. Leads to mutual happiness. These are the four statements made about human human relationship. Whether these four statements are correct or not is what we have to verify. So the first statement is relationship is between the self and the self. Is this correct? Not correct. Correct. Right. The second statement is that there are feelings in relationship in one I, one self or another self. Yes. So these feelings are there in one self or another self. And we, that's why I ask you, it is in the self or in the body? In the self. When these feelings can be recognized, they are definite. And these are the nine feelings which we have listed. You can check for yourself whether these feelings are naturally acceptable to you or not. The fourth statement is that their fulfillment in relationship and their evaluation leads to mutual happiness. It will lead to my happiness as well as the happiness of the other in relationship. So if I have feeling of respect for you, it gives me happiness because it is naturally acceptable to me. If I express this feeling to you, it will give you happiness and happiness. Happiness, right? So it leads to mutual happiness. It leads to my happiness and it leads to happiness of the other. So it leads to mutual happiness. These are the four statements made about relationship, about the human human relationship. Now you have to look into each of these feelings, find out whether it is naturally acceptable to you in relationship or it is not naturally acceptable to you. Whether it leads to mutual fulfillment or it does not lead to mutual fulfillment. Mutual happiness or it does not lead to mutual happiness. So what do you think? The feeling of trust leads to mutual happiness or yes. feeling of distrust? Respect or disrespect? Respect. Affection or jealousy? Mm. Care or exploitation? Mm. Right? Guidance or misguidance? Mm. Or this you can ask. Whether these feelings are naturally acceptable to you in relationship or not naturally acceptable to you in relationship. Right? Does it lead to mutual happiness? Does it not lead to mutual happiness? <laughs> This is one set of questions that we have to ask. The second is, when you go about you know, <coughs> identifying this feeling, understanding this feeling, right? then you can see whether it is possible for us to have this feeling of trust or is it not possible for us to have this feeling of trust. Right? Whether, whether we have, it is possible for us to have the feeling of respect affection and so on. Because, as we had already discussed, we all want to be in relationship. Right? But when it comes to fulfillment in relationship, we are not able to ensure it. Right? At first day we said, every night when you end up fighting, you decide you know, the next day that you will not get into fight again. But by the night again the fight takes place. Why? Because of the lack of understanding of this. Because of lack of understanding of these feelings. Because of lack of understanding and therefore lack of these feelings in relationship. 
In fact, most of your complaint in relationship has to do with these feelings. Nobody cares for me. He did not respect me. He violated my trust. All these complaints are there. So most of the complaints that we have in relationships has to do with absence of one or many of these feelings. Right? And that is your complaint. But when you go with this complaint to the other person, he cannot solve it for you. Right? Because he himself does not know about it. He is not able to ensure it himself. I, ask it, I, like, I keep giving this example. That if the husband and wife are not able to ensure this feeling with each other, and there is a lot of complaint, lot of unhappiness, and finally they you know, go to the court. What will the court do? <laughs> they will grant divorce. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is it doing? Is it developing the capacity to live in relationship with the husband and the wife? Or it is permanently damaging the possibility of <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Second one. What is expected of the court? <laughs> yeah, but if you uh, think of the human, you know, uh, system of justice, what will it do? If somebody does not have the capacity to live with fulfillment in relationship, will you try to help him to develop the capacity to live in relationship? Or he will damage the relationship? <laughs> but then court does not do it because court is not aware of it. <laughs> if this understanding of relationship is not there in the court, then the court will not be able to help. And we think that this is justice done. society and uh, the side effect of children and ultimately it will boil down to the country as a whole. <laughs> giving a limited experience to uh, Quite a number of people, they listened to us and they gave us an agreement saying we are going back as well. And uh, when they do that, we get medical satisfaction. And there are somebody, someone, <laughs> who are determined to separate. And for that, uh, legal system cannot just put them together when they are not happy. So we have to go by the legal provisions. <laughs> As the case coming up there, identity together will not be right for justice system because it is their wish. They want to separate. What do we do? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
in fact, you see, uh, in India and in countries like India, things are similar. Because we have, you know, whether we have understood the relationship properly or not, at least we have an acceptance for relationship. Right. So called developed countries. I was told that in France, the average number of divorces is 15 times in a lifetime. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> times in a lifetime, and that is the average. So it can be more also, eh? or it can be less. <laughs> so much so that there is a joke. The wife is shouting at the husband that look, look at my child and your child, right? They are beating our child. <laughs> so, the my child is different, sir. The husband child is different, sir. And their child is a different sense. So already, you know, there has been a lot of divorce you know, and remarriage. <coughs> so, <coughs> but I will just try to draw your attention towards the fact that what we need to do is to ensure fulfillment in relationships. Right? What we have is the complaint in relationship. Right? Complaint in relationship of lack of fulfillment. Right? The issue of court just came in by the court. And so, and in fact, you see that incident I quoted about the jail, the last court sent to jail. What I feel is that still there is possibility to work, even with the people who have committed three to five murders, let alone husband and wife. So if we confine them in jail because they are damaging to the society, right? what do we do with them? Do we develop right understanding and right feeling in them so that they become responsible human beings? Or we just let them like leave them like that? Or rather make them worse by putting all the criminals together. Today when they come out of the jail, they become more criminal <laughs> or they become good human beings. More criminal, right? Harder criminal. <laughs> so, what is, what is required is to develop this competence in them to live with relationship, right? To understand the relationship and to live with relationship. And when we try with this, you know, in the jail, people who had committed three to five murders could say after six months that their behavior with all the nine inmates, nine hundred inmates in jail, is satisfying for them and for these inmates. So the basic idea is that those who are outside the jail and those who are inside the jail right, must develop this capacity right, to understand this feeling, to have this feeling, right? and to ensure the fulfillment of this feeling leading to mutual happiness. Right? Is it required? Is it not required? So this is one thing which we will have to verify you know, slowly. And in order to do that, we will look into each of these activities, each of these feelings, right, one by one, see what it means, what is the meaning of trust, what is the meaning of respect, what is the meaning of affection, whether we have this feeling, whether we can have this feeling, whether there can be the continuity of these feelings, all those questions have to be answered. So we will take them up one by one, try to unfold. But another question which I must pose it here before we proceed. <coughs> if these are the feelings and they are basic to this fulfillment in relationship, try to find out what is the role of physical facility in these feelings. The fulfillment of this feeling, what is the role of physical facility? Attention. 
keep thinking, right? For example, if I have a feeling of respect for you, and I express this feeling of respect for you, right? What will it require in terms of